Hey there everybody, welcome to Tuk Tuk's Trinkets and Terrain. Uh, my name is David and in this video I'm going to show you how I scratch built a Gorm from the game Kingdom Death. Uh, Kingdom Death is a tactics miniature style game that has some really unique and creepy um, monster miniatures and the Gorm is one of them. Um, first saw this on an episode of Critical Role actually, so it's kind of where I was introduced to the monsters from uh, Kingdom Death and the Gorm kind of just stuck out to me from all the ones that I looked up. Um, it's a pretty fun build. I just used some dollar store toys as the base and then sort of my normal crafting materials that I always have on hand. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. Uh, thanks for stopping by, hope you enjoy. All right, to start things off, I went ahead and printed the official model just for a reference. And then I went to the dollar store and picked up a few things. This uh, Stegosaurus, plan to use for the body. And then for the arms, I got these two Final Faction figures, as well as a couple of these incredible uh, toys. And then, of course, the baby doll for the head. Uh, to start things off, I cut up the Stegosaurus, um, chopped off the head and tail, and then actually trimmed a bit from the middle section, maybe like a quarter inch or so, just to give it a different shape and make it look less like the uh, original toy. And then I just attached the two uh, body halves with some hot glue. So here I start to smooth out the transition between the two body pieces. Uh, I'm just using hot glue here. This is old DM Scotty method of just using hot glue to create texture and, and strength. Um, this is the most realistic method when it comes to skin, but I like it and how it looks. It gives lots of great texture and it's pretty easy to do. It's not difficult and you know, you just need the one tool essentially. I make sure here to keep the definition of the shoulders and legs so they don't get lost in the uh, the jumble here. So next up I went to work on the head of the Gorm. Uh, I started off by cutting off the jaw of the, uh, the toy here so that I could give it a more open mouth, make it look a little more intimidating. Uh, and I just stuck that back into place with some hot glue and then I went ahead and reinforced it around the outside as well. Uh, to bulk out the inside of the head, this toy is pretty flimsy and soft. Um, I just used some aluminum foil to try and keep the weight down. Um, and I really just packed it in there to give it a lot of strength and rigidity so that it didn't squish on me when I was in the later steps. And again, just secured that in place with some more hot glue. So the bulk of the sculpting on the head here, I'm just going to use this air dried clay. Uh, it's nice, cheap, and easy, and I already have some. Something like green stuff would probably have been better, uh, but this is what I have, so I just went with it. It ended up working just fine. I only had a few cracking issues down the road, but, but it wasn't an issue to fix uh, once I got to that point. So here I am just smoothing out the inside of the mouth filling in all the gaps and just making sure it's going to be one sort of seamless piece. And then I wanted to create, uh, I guess, cheeks is what I would call them, sort of like the stretchy mouth bits when something opens its mouth that really shouldn't be open in its mouth as far as it should. Um, it's done a lot in like horror movies, I think. Um, you can kind of see what I'm going for here. I'm not really describing it that well, but um, you get that really stretchy skin flap on the inside of the mouth uh, that gives it a really creepy vibe. And then to give it that sort of stretchy look, I just use this little tool to lay in some lines on the outside here. This just gives it some texture and then gives the implication that, you know, this uh, creature is really stretching its, its skin out to open its mouth. And then with some thin rolls of clay, I created some lips to transition between the uh, original toy and the clay that I've been adding. I then laid in some gum lines for the teeth to sink into. Uh, I wanted to make layers of teeth, so I ended up doing two gum lines on the top and bottom, uh, and just you know melt these into the rest of the clay here. I also put the stretch marks on the inside of the cheek. Uh, you'd be able to see those relatively easily, so I wanted to make sure there was some detail in there as well. Now while the clay was still wet, I knew I was going to use some toothpicks for the teeth, so I just grabbed a chunk and uh, popped in some holes to make gluing in the teeth easier down the road once the clay was dry. So I made sure to do that on all of the gum lines, all four. This would just make it easier down the road because um, I wanted to paint before I put the teeth in just to make it easier on myself. You can see here, this is kind of the finished construction of the sort of base layers of the mouth. 
So next up, I started work on the sort of lure that the creature has. Uh, it's called an esca, or at least the angler fish's lure is called that. Um, not sure if that applies to all creatures. I'm just going to call it an esca, um, but it's the sort of lure light thing at the end of the uh, big long sort of pseudopod that attracts uh, prey. Uh, and my intention here was to actually make this glow. So I have these uh, LED bulbs with some leads already attached. So I stuck that through this straw here. This is from um, a dollar store cup that I actually used in a previous video that I had saved. Uh, but to give it some rigidity and also make it flexible, um, I layered a whole bunch of floral wire and uh, stuck it inside as well. This let me shape it a lot better uh, as well as give it um, some rigidity, like I said. And then for the end of the uh, esca here, I grabbed a clear marble for the light to shine through and sort of diffuse it as well. And then just used a bit of clay to create the transition between the straw and the marble. So you can see here, just testing the bulb out, making sure it works with a battery. Unfortunately, these LEDs that I bought required 12 volts. Uh, I didn't notice until after I had purchased them. So I have to make that work somehow. Um, but set that aside to dry and next up I wanted to create some more sort of bulbous eyes for my head here So these are just some flat backed glass beads So I just glued those on and then just laid in some clay to create the uh, eyelids Around the eyes. I, I made sure to keep my the original nose intact I did add in some clay to increase the definition of the uh, ridge line that goes between the nose just to make it match a little bit more with the surrounding eyes. So next up, I removed all of the arms that I needed. So I've got the two sets from the Final Faction toys, as well as the sets from the uh, Incredibles. Uh, one of the arms on the Incredibles was kind of stuck to the body, so I ended up cutting off a leg. Uh, I figured I could just turn this into a stump um, from like a previous wound, something like that. Uh, and I just hot glued all these on around the bottom of the jawline. Now if you look at the original model, the arms are much smaller, um, but this is what I found um, and I wasn't going to complain. I actually kind of like the sort of beefy arms in the back and the smaller, uh, more agile ones up front. Uh, gives it a nice look. I then use some more hot glue to not only secure the bonds, but also give it that overall skin texture that I was going for. Uh, so you can see here, I've drilled a hole through the top of the head for the electronics to feed through. Um, and I just taped my electronics to this barbecue skewer to help me pull them through uh, the head here. This is a really easy way to get electronics through tight spaces without having to force them through. Um, and I just secured the whole assembly with some hot glue and then smoothed it out um, with some hot glue as well to, again, just secure it and give it that skin texture that I was going for. Did the same thing all over the entirety of the straw so that it all matched with the rest of the body. You can see I've got some of that cracking that I was talking about, but with the hot glue, I just smoothed it all out and it's uh, not a problem anymore. So at this point, I was ready to attach the head to the body, but I needed to fill in the, uh, the butt of my creature. So I just grabbed some clay and just gave it a nice uh, round uh, butt. <laughs> Um, after that was all set aside and drying, I uh, finished up my electronics with a on-off switch as well as the battery. Now the way I set this up, uh, this wasn't going to be able to be changed, the, the battery. So you can see I've uh, stuffed the battery inside the body, cut a little notch for the on-off switch uh, that I glue in here, and then, I, and then I just use the hot glue to glue on the head. Uh, with the amount that this would get turned on, um, I don't really see the battery ever running out and once it does it's still gonna look cool um, so I'm not too worried about changing the battery and I just make sure to position the head in the, at an angle that I'm uh, happy with and again just using some hot glue on the outside to reinforce the bond make sure this thing isn't gonna fall apart uh, and this is generally the entirety of the construction so you can see here this is uh, pretty much what it looks like um, See the switch on the bottom is sort of hidden and can turn the uh, light in the ESCA on and off nice and easy. Uh, but I didn't really like the transition between the head and the body. Uh, so I just bulked it out here with a little bit of clay 
uh, to give it a more smooth transition. I really wanted that sort of uh, like rhino look where it's sort of just like one continuous line uh, all the way to the back of the body. Uh, and once that was dry, I just used a bunch of hot glue again to fill in all of my skin texture and make everything all the same uh, look. Uh, I did leave the ears uncovered because I really wanted to keep that distinct human shaped ear just to give it that sort of creepy uncanny valley sort of vibe. Uh, and you can see that my light shines nice and bright. Um, so I took this outside and sprayed it with a black uh, spray primer. Uh, I didn't need to worry too much about the Mod Podge th in this because it was just hot glue so I just made it I just needed to make sure my paint would stick to it. And with the painted black, it comes together a lot more nicely than when it was all different colors and, and clearly distinct pieces. And it's starting to actually uh, look like something. So to paint this, I wanted to try out some paints that I haven't used before. Um, so I started with a base coat of this bronzed shadow that I got in a dungeon crate. Uh, you might have seen some of my unboxing videos and I got this in one of them. So I wanted to give it a try. Um, this gave him a nice sort of overall really tanned look, which I ended up liking and really leaning into down the road. Um, but while I am doing the base code here, I just wanted to remind you, if you want to support the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are posted. And then make sure to hit the like button if you are liking the video so far. Leave a comment down below of maybe a suggestion of a future video that you'd like to see me try and attempt, or maybe something that I could have done differently in this project, or something that you really liked. And share this with your friends if you think they would be interested as well. Anything you do to support the channel, I greatly appreciate. Um, I am very close to getting qualified for the YouTuber partnership program, so any little bit helps, and I do appreciate it. Now with the main uh, chunk of the skin all base coated, I wanted to try and do a wet blend to a different color on the end of the Esca here. So I just mixed a bit of this gray paint with the original uh, bronze shadow look. Now for the base coat in the inside of the mouth, I just used this wine color to give it that sort of reddish, um, you know, thin skin, you can see the blood um, look. Now at this point, I realized that something went wrong with my electronics and the light was actually always on, no matter where the switch was posi positioned. I think the leads got bent uh, and were just constantly touching, unfortunately. So I tried my best to cut out the switch to fix it, but I ended up just ripping the wire and ruining it. And I didn't really want to cut apart everything to fix it, so I ended up just giving up and filling in the hole with some hot glue and painting that over, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, I really would have liked the light to work or at least be able to salvage the electronics inside, but uh, in the long run, I ended up replacing the marble with a bright blue one, which gave it a really nice color pop uh, to the rest of the miniature here. So with going along with me trying some paints that I have yet to try, uh, I have this batch of Citadel dry paints that I got on clearance that I've used a couple times, uh, but I have this Eldar flesh that I wanted to do a heavy sort of overbrush with over my bronze uh, shadow paint. Um, so I did a pretty heavy dry brush with that all over all of the skin to make it a little bit lighter and not so uh, tan looking. Uh, and then I used this Asheroth red for the mouth to give that some highlights as well. Now for this project I actually went out and bought another wash, this uh, Reichland Flesh Shade. Uh, I figured that would be good for this um, monster. And I just used that all over everything. I definitely went way too heavy with it. Um, you can see here, it's very, very dark once it's dried. There's actually some places where it pooled really, really dark and it was almost black. Um, but I did like the result. It wasn't exactly what I was going for, but I was happy with it. So I just uh, went with the flow and just kept moving along. You can see here, I've removed the, uh, the marble that I was talking about. I'm gonna replace it with this blue one once I finish painting. Uh, so for one final sort of highlight slash dry brush, I have this very, very old uh, elf flesh paint. Uh, and I tried to do some directional highlights on this. Uh, just kept it simple because I don't, I've never really done this. Uh, so I just went from a top down sort of view and highlighted all the areas where the light would be hitting if it was directly overhead. Kind of hard to see the difference here, but there is a, a very distinct lightness to the top of the body compared to the underside. Uh, you can see here I'm just holding it basically so I'm looking straight down and just hitting all of the areas that I can see 
uh, with the elf flesh. I hit this pretty hard in all the areas that I can see um, to give it a lot more definition and lighten up those areas. I would call this uh, fairly successful considering this is really the first time that I've ever tried uh, directional lighting like this. Next up I prepared the teeth. So like I said, um, I just used these toothpicks uh, which I painted this ivory color and then hit it with some Agrax Earthshade to darken them up. And while those were drying, I grabbed that gray paint from before and gave all of the toes on the model a nice uh, pedicure. Uh, I did a give these a wash as well so they weren't so bright, um, just with the flesh shade again. Now for the eyes, I wanted to make these sort of clouded over, um, maybe give the impression that the creature is blind or at least very hard of seeing. Um, so I'm going to use this white pearl color. While the eyes were drying, I wanted to fix up my stump of a arm here. Uh, and to do that, I wanted to create a bit of bone that was sticking out. So I just stuck this pin uh, into the model and then trimmed it off as close as I could to the, uh, to the arm itself to create a little bone protrusion that you can see here. And then I simply just painted the bone in this ivory and then painted the sort of stump area with the wine um, and called it good basically. After that, I went back into the eyes with this very thin brush and that same wine color and sort of trimmed the eyes in this red um, and then went back one more time and fixed up my sloppy edges with the pearl um, that you can kind of see here to give them more of just a clean overall look. After that, it was time to glue the teeth in. So I'm just dipping these in some Eileen's Tacky Glue and just pushing them directly into the holes that I made uh, earlier when the clay was still wet. And as I'm gluing these in, I'm just making sure to alternate them so that they sort of uh, make some kind of sense when the creature would close its mouth. The teeth sort of, you know, zipper between each other, basically. So you can see here, uh, the glue is still wet here, but the teeth have all been um, applied. They're pretty long. Um, which I didn't really like, and I do address that in a little bit, but first I gave them a little bit of a dry brush with this yellow, and then another even lighter dry brush with this white uh, to give them more of a teeth look, I guess. They were just a little too dark for my, my liking. Uh, next up, I wanted to give the mouth some sheen and some sort of drool, uh, as well as give the Esca bulb, I guess you would call it, um, some shine. So I'm just using this glossy Mod Podge and applying this uh, really, really thick uh, in the mouth. If you do apply it thick, it doesn't dry clear and creates this really awesome looking sort of drool look. So while that was drying, I made this nice base. Uh, this is just a chipboard circle with a foam board circle glued on top, a little bit of stone texture, and then some sand for flocking, and then some static grass and some GW skulls to uh, give a little bit of visual interest. You can see I've also marked out with some permanent marker where the feet are going to go. I wanted to make sure I didn't glue anything underneath the feet and that the, uh, the golem had a place to stand. Uh, so I did this off camera, but I wanted to give the golem a little bit more battle damage. Um, and this also let me address uh, my issue with the teeth being too big. So you can see I've knocked a bunch of the teeth out and trimmed them up as well as added uh, a few sort of slash wounds on the lips. Uh, I even cut off another finger and did the same treatment that I did with the severed arm. And then I added one more gash back here on one of the back legs. I also glued in some pins to the feet so that I could attach it to the base more easily. I just glued the gorm to my base here and this is the final result. You see I've added some fresh blood spray to the front of the creature as well as the base uh, to give him more of a I guess in action vibe, like he's chasing some adventures, something like that. Um, you can also see that I was that the base is slanted. I was having a really hard time balancing this guy. The base is not quite big enough to support the weight of its head. Um, and anything I tried just wasn't really working or I wasn't really happy with. So I ended up just cutting a bit of foam at a very slight angle um, so that he sort of sits upwards and doesn't tilt over. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with this piece. Uh, there's the one thing that I think I would change is obviously the electronics working. Um, if I had felt ambitious enough, I would have cut them open and fixed the electronics and put it put it back in so that the uh, Esca bulb glowed. But other than that, I think this turned out really well. It's definitely not the same as the original Gorm from Kingdom Death, but it's definitely 
the same vibe and definitely is creepy, which I am very happy with. I do have an Instagram account if you want to check that out. Uh, I post work in progress pictures and other things that I'm working on that, but not necessarily doing videos on. Uh, and I do have an Etsy shop if you want to go check that out. I've got some dungeon tiles and accessories, different things to add to your tabletop games. Uh, even if you head over there and just favor my shop, I really would appreciate that. Uh, both of those links can be found in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment, all that good YouTube stuff. But more than anything, thank you so much for watching the video. Hope to see you next time.